Hey guys, Level Cap here, and yesterday Rainbow Six Siege launched its year two content with Operation Velvet Shell. Today we'll be talking about the two new operators as well as a few patch notes. Since the launch of Rainbow Six Siege, we've now gotten 10 total new operators, and I think these are two of my favorite. Let's start off by taking a look at the new offensive operator, Jackal. He's a really cool operator, comes with three different options for primary weapons, which is very cool, both a SMG a full-on battle rifle, and then a shotgun. So you can basically pick whatever kind of weapon you're in the mood for or whatever the map calls for. His unique ability is a visor that powers up. It's called the Inox, and this highlights enemy footsteps for him. It'll even tell you how long ago those footsteps were made based on the color, blue being old, red being very, very recent. Once he's found a set of footprints, you can stare at it and activate a scan that will actually tell you the location of that enemy, and it will continue to ping that enemy throughout the course of the game, like once every 10 seconds or so often like that. Getting Jackal into the action early on and scanning footsteps is a great way to flush out those roamers. He's basically a direct counter to the concept of roaming. If you're the kind of player that likes to clear the upstairs or the downstairs before pushing into the main objective just to make sure that nobody's gonna sneak up behind you, you might really enjoy Jackal because his ability directly contributes to that kind of gameplay. Even without using his footstep scanning ability, just being able to see the footsteps of your enemies really allows you to track them down. He does have some counters though. Kavera's silent step ability will allow her to move around the map without creating footprints that uh, Jackal will be able to see. Also, if you're playing mute, your jammers, your signal jammers will disrupt his visor ability, and that can actually be a big distraction. You actually have to turn off your visor ability when around a mute signal jammer. Otherwise, it'll start blurring up your vision, much like a drone's vision gets blurred up when you're near a signal jammer. So uh, he does have a few counters, but still a very good operator nonetheless. Now, I haven't tried out his shotgun yet just because I'm more of an SMG assault rifle type player, but uh, I like both the SMG and the assault rifle. I think the assault rifle is probably a little bit better of a weapon because it has the exact same 800 round per minute rate of fire as the SMG does but uh, it does more damage per shot and the recoil isn't too much worse. So if you're about damage per second, the assault rifle might appeal to you more, but the SMG is a 50 round magazine. So if you don't wanna worry about reloading and you just wanna headshot people for days and just have your same magazine all round long, then that might appeal to you more. You can also mount the ACOG on the SMG, which is pretty nice. Ultimately though, I see his ability really changing up the Rainbow Six Siege meta. If you see somebody's footprints going upstairs, you can tell your entire team that you have a roamer upstairs and then they can go flush them out, take them out, get the kill. So it may very well change up the roaming meta. If you see that there's a jackal on the enemy team, you might want to just play it safe and play closer to the objective. So Jackal is definitely a hunter. If that's your style, if you want to go after those roamers and make sure you clear out the map, then this is definitely a good operator to pick. However, if you are more of the kind of operator who likes to camp or turtle up, then Mira is a great defensive operator. Now Mira's ability is incredibly cool and we'll get to that in a second. For her primary weapon, she brings the same shotgun to the table, but also the Vector 45 ACP. This may be known to you as the Chris Vector the K10, it's known as a bunch of different things depending on which video game you play. It is a real world gun though and it shoots 1200 rounds per minute which Rainbow Six Siege has stayed true to. This thing just blazes through people. Now it doesn't do a huge amount of damage per shot but that doesn't really matter too much especially if you're aiming somewhere in the head area. It is great at getting headshots especially if your accuracy isn't perfect because just spraying and praying in the general direction is probably going to do the trick. Now her unique operator ability is again another game changer just like Jackal's. This one is called Black Mirror and she has the ability to place down two black mirrors that create a hole in a wall and this can be not just a normal wall but a reinforced wall with one way bulletproof glass. So on the other side of this glass the enemy will just see a black reflective surface and they cannot shoot through it, but I can see them. 
Now if I want to shoot them, I can shoot out this little canister below the glass, it'll shatter, and then I can take my shot. So not only can you spy on the enemy and see their approach coming up to try and maybe breach a wall, but you can also shoot out that glass at your own will and engage the enemy. Now you saw right there, I actually shot my bullets into the glass that was still up. There is a very short delay between when you shoot that gas canister and when the glass comes down. So if an enemy runs up, you can't immediately shatter the glass and take them out. It will take a second, and if they know that, they can sort of time their approach accordingly. Again, you'll see here this twitch makes it away completely unscathed right there because I just wasn't able to shatter the glass quite quick enough. And then she takes out my teammate, but I am able to get my vengeance with this incredibly high rate of fire, Chris Vector, or the Vector 45 ACP as we're calling it now. Now technically we're not putting any holes in walls that couldn't have already been there. So I mean all of these reinforced walls could have just been non-reinforced and I could have shot out a hole in the wall with my shotgun. Oh yeah, right, both operators carry a secondary shotgun as an option. So if you want to run with that, it is available, which is pretty cool. Also good for making some murder holes in walls. And Mirror actually has a few good combinations where you can reinforce one chunk of wall, put your black mirror there, and then instead of shooting out the black mirror, just move over to the side of the reinforced wall where it's not reinforced and then shoot through the non-reinforced wall, basically where you think the enemy is. And I've seen a bunch of people already using this tactic and it's pretty darn effective. Now, of course, there's plenty of counters to Black Mirror. It is bulletproof, but it's not uh, breach proof. So basically any operator that can breach through a reinforced wall can also take out the Black Mirror. You can also come in from behind, either shoot the canister yourself as the enemy team, um, come in with a Twitch drone even, and take out the canister, which is very effective, which will just leave an open hole in the wall that both you and the enemy team can shoot through. So there's a lot of counters to her abilities, but nonetheless, they just do provide some really cool intel options. And if the enemy team can't get a Twitch drone in there or the appropriate angle to open it up, then they only have a few operators that are really designed to deal with it from the attacking side. Now, I'm really enjoying Mira. I love the Vector 45. It's just a really fun spray and pray weapon and also her defensive gadget is just so much fun to use. It is possible that it will become far more predictable down the road and people will know where Mira black mirrors are likely going to be and there'll be all sorts of counters to them. But at the moment, it seems to be a pretty fun and effective tactic. Now, aside from getting a whole bunch of brand new season two content, and I think I'll be covering a bit more of that in a future video, we did get a nice patch with this update that's changed a bunch of things. One of the big things that a lot of people are happy about is consistent scope or optic rendering on your weapons. Now, there was a little bit of an issue uh, basically uh, throughout Rainbow Six ever since it came out where depending on which gun you are running, your optics would be different sizes or different distances away from basically your eyeball. So they would render smaller because they'd be further away on the weapon or they'd render bigger because they're way on the back of the weapon and you would just basically get inconsistent um, scope sizes depending on which weapon you're using. People didn't like this, so Ubisoft has now normalized the scope rendering. They should be the same size no matter what weapon you're using them on. Ubisoft has also redesigned the main start menu. So when you get into the game, the buttons you see will look a little bit different. It'll be a little bit cleaner looking. Challenges are kind of updated. Um, the friends list icon looks a little bit different. It does look better in general. And they've improved a few features, but uh, unfortunately they haven't improved some of the things that I thought needed the most improvement, such as the store menu system or the operator customization menu. There's a lot of menus in the game that are convoluted, uh, take way too many clicks to get to the area you're trying to go for. And still to this day, even when I have over a hundred hours in the game, I'm still confused as to where some things are, or it just takes forever, especially to like try and make blanket changes to weapons or camos and stuff like that. It's just very time consuming and slow paced. And I, it makes me not want to spend any time doing cool character customization. I'll just sort of do it once and then 
leave my operator as as is and never make any changes to them because the menu system is such a pain in the butt. Now, something that wasn't mentioned in the patch notes but was mentioned on Reddit is that IQ can now see people using their phones using her device. So basically when she's scanning for electronics, if people are looking at security cameras, that will show up. She'll be able to see their phones. So you might be able to get them through walls using IQ's ability um, or just generally locate operators and hunt them down. So I think IQ is going to be significantly more useful because of this update. And that's probably one of the more impa important patch notes uh, that just wasn't mentioned there. But luckily Reddit was sort of on top of it and they got that information out ASAP. Anyway, this DLC is a great start to season two. Once again, it's going to be free for everyone. You can unlock it using the in-game currency and the two new operators are some of my favorite. I'll be covering the other information with this DLC, including the new map in future videos. As always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.